Well, he did it. It finally happened after 18 months. Creality has finally built a printer that competes with the Bamboo Labs P1P, and it's this. This is the Creality K1 Max. It has all kinds of features you've never seen on a Creality printer before. And in this video, I'll put it through its paces. I'll show you some of the highs and lows, and I'll explain why you might want to buy one of these if you're in the market for a 3D printer. So let's get started. I bought my first 3D printer about eight years ago. And at the time, 3D printers at best printed terribly, at worst were complete fire hazards. And I didn't really want something that would burn my house down or, or I just wouldn't be happy with the output. So I spent the extra money and I bought a Creality CR10. And I loved it. I still love it, I still own it, and guess what? It still runs. Now, over the years, I've had many other 3D printers that I thought were okay. But never once have I, since I owned the CR10, said, I really love this printer. Until now. And that's because Creality sent me this K1 Max printer. It's a big 3D printer, 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters. On the front panel, there's the nicest display I've ever seen, it's, and it's touch sensitive, so all the control is done there. Custom extruder, direct drive, and fans everywhere. There's a fan on the side for cooling the bed as well as a fan in the back with a charcoal filter and of course the fan on the extruder. Now the printer is configured as a Core XY printer which means you can print really fast up to 600 millimeters a second. The bed of course is 300 by 300. It's a very smooth texture which isn't my preference but it does seem to adhere things very well and I had no trouble with it at all. Now in addition to that activated charcoal filter on the back to get rid of any smell from, from any filament there's also a couple of extra features. There's first LiDAR for doing hyper accurate bed leveling and that works well. There's a camera for doing time lapse and just for fun there's a, a, a quick lookup table here if you don't remember the settings for any filaments. They're right there and they seem to be pretty accurate. I've tried a couple of them and they were dead on. Now when you power on the K1 Max for the first time it'll go through a bunch of calibration steps. But you can do these yourself after maybe you've moved your printer. So you can go to the system menu and select that, that self-check and pick which, which of the calibrations you want. Input shaping allows the printer to determine where any vibration is and compensate for it. And of course, bed leveling will create a level map for the bed and most importantly, determine where the zero for the Z-axis is. Now with the printer set up and calibrated, the next thing to do is to load it with filament. Now the really good news is loading filament into the K1 Max is trivial. You take one of the rolls of Hyper Series filament that they included with this, it's PLA so it's easy to work with, put it on the holder at the back and then run the filament up through the tubing all the way to the extruder. And when you get there, open the unlock switch that's there and allow the filament to push down all the way to the bottom of, of the extruder and then lock it again and that's all. Next, go to the settings on the front panel and select Extrude Retract and hit Extrude when it comes up. And it will heat up the extruder to the point where it can, it can then start pushing material through the nozzle and it'll start coming out. And when it's finished, you can just take that off and then you're ready to go with your printer. Now, I don't have a slicer installed yet, but I'll, I'll use one of the supplied STL files from Creality. And of course, I'll start with the Benchy. So all I have to do is select it and hit Print. And then I'll use the time-lapse camera built into the printer, both so you can see how it works, as well as see how this Benchy turns out. This is a 16-minute Benchy, so, so we're going pretty quickly. And this comes out pretty nicely, although there's a bit of ringing around the, the bow of the boat. And that's just a function of going very quickly. They also laid this out on a brim rather than, than a skirt. So the bottom is really smooth and I tried to peel that layer off and I just couldn't. So I printed a 40 minute Benchy, took a little more time. It came out a whole lot better and the bottom looks nicer as well. So now it's time to get a slicer up and running and I'm just gonna use Creality Print. It's some variation of Cura by the looks of things. It works actually really well and it supports all of the features of the printer, including things like the camera. So I'm just gonna use that. I'm not gonna get into a religious war about why didn't I try Orca Slicer or all these other things. Use whatever slicer you want. There's profiles out there for, all, for the K1 Max for all of those slicers. Just pick one, whatever makes you happy. I'm just gonna use this one. And again, you have all of the, all of the options here for, for printing, selecting infills, uh, temperature speeds, all those sorts of things. And when you're happy, you can hit the slice. And it's giving me a warning here that these things that stick out could have supports. I could put them in there automatically, but I won't. And 
when I'm happy, I can say go to the land print and you can see it shows the printer that I have here. But if I had a farm full of printers, maybe I've got six of these things and I'm, I'm using this in a business, I can select which printer it goes on and that's qu quite nice. The other thing I can also do here is I can look at the details and I can see certainly all of the details of the job as well as some history. And I can see the, the live camera, as I mentioned. And if I stick my hand in there, you'll see that it's actually live. So you can watch this. You can then use your phone to connect to the printer and see this job printing live. So you don't have to sit there and watch to make sure that there isn't a ball of string forming in the printer because the bed let go or something. So all in all, it's pretty nice. And this is what I'm gonna use. So I'll print those, those legs off my CNC dust boot and I'll show you what they look like. And then I'll show you a couple of other jobs I did. Now I'll show you the time-lapse off the printer because I can. I'm only doing one bracket at a time though. Uh, but when I'm finished, they come out great and I couldn't imagine them being even better. So I'll put them over on my CNC here, screw them on and uh, you'll see what they look like. And then I'll mount the actual dust boot in there and that's the job. And it came out, it came out fantastic. Now I've been putting together a 19 inch rack to hold all of my YouTube equipment. And you can see it here, there's a Blackmagic Hyperdeck there. I actually have another one that's gonna go in the hole beside it, it's just not in there yet. But above that, there's a 1U mount of four removable SSDs. And all of this was printed on the K1 Max, including those orange handles, which are the handles for the removable SSDs themselves. And the K1 Max did a fantastic job here and I can't say enough good things about it. it. This is about 13, 14 hours of printing, just so you know, so it sustained this really well. Now I didn't design this just as a full disclosure. This design came from Caleb Pike over at DSLR Video Shooter. It's a great YouTube channel if you wanna find out anything related to video, especially video equipment related to YouTube. So. Uh, Caleb, if you're watching, thanks for this design. It was fantastic and it was just easier to buy this than, than try and design my own. All right, I want to try some different materials and, and, and tests here. So I printed a calibration cube, 20 by 20 millimeter calibration cube. You can see on the X axis there, it's within 0.04 millimeters. On the Y axis, it's actually a little over 20, but 0 0.03, 0 0.02 millimeters over. So very close. Now the black clip, the bag clip here is, uh, is ABS. I wanted to try a, the, the worst material I, I have, which is ABS. And then the red golf tee is TPU, it's flexible. And again, the, the K1 Max did a fantastic job on all of these, these strange materials. And uh, I look forward to trying more. So where do I land on the Creality K1 Max? Well. I think this is an amazing printer and I think Creality has built a great competitor to the Bamboo Labs P1P. It would be a very tough choice right now to say one of these printers is better than the other. In fact, I'm going to retire my self-designed 300 millimeter cube printer and I'm going to replace it with this K1 Max for a longer term test. And I'll post any updates to my community tab. So if you haven't already clicked the bell down there, click the bell and you'll get notified when something happens. Now, I'll also put a link, an affiliate link down below if you want to pick one of these printers up and you use that link, you're going to help out the channel and that will certainly make me grateful and happy. I'll also put a link to Caleb Pike's channel down there, the DSLR video shooter channel, uh, if you're interested in what's going on and as far as video recording for YouTube or video equipment, he's the guy to watch. Now, before I go, I want to quickly remind you that I do a live stream on Friday evenings with three other YouTubers. And it's a great time to come and hang out and ask questions and get not just one, but four different opinions on, on things. We usually agree on a lot of things, but, but every once in a while, someone will say, wait, wait a minute, you haven't thought about this. Anyway, it's a, it's a fun time and we're just getting it started, but you're welcome to join and uh, feel free to come with, with an armful of questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Now with that, I'll wind down. So get out there, make your world and I'll see you next time.